India's largest textile park in Warangal. We also launched India's largest medical devices park, MedTech, in Hyderabad. We also have, in fact, uh, coming up soon, we also have world's largest pharma cluster in about 19,000 acres, very close to the city of Hyderabad. So all of these have been done, or you know, some of which also will be done in, in a few in a few months and a few years to come. But most of these have been done with almost zero support from government of India. Most of these have been done with the support of the private sector. What did I mean when I said innovation? When I mentioned innovation, by innovation, I think the most common, um, commonly understood word in India when, I, when it uh, comes to finance, uh, finance and financial markets is jugaad. We followed a jugaad model wherever we could. You know, we went very creatively, we went very innovatively, and we raised money, we raised capital, and thus we've been able to execute a lot, lot of these projects. To begin with, power sector. When we started our journey five years ago, we were a power deficit state. We had a deficit of 2700 megawatts of power as a state of Telangana. The industry had two days of power holiday every week. In the domestic sector, every household in Telangana was reading under five to seven hours of power cuts every single day. That was the situation when we assumed office back in 2014, June. But I'm delighted to report to you, in the last five years, We've added 8,650 megawatts of contracted capacity, and the total now has gone up to 16,816 megawatts. And also, I'm proud to share with you that Telangana stands second in the country in terms of renewable energy. We have, we have already installed 3,700 megawatts of solar energy. And as a, as a result today, we are not just self-sufficient. We are, in fact, power surplus, and we continue to grow rapidly, and we continue to provide 24 by 7 quality power to not just the industry, not just to the households, but Telangana today is the only state in the country which also provides 24 hours of uninterrupted free power supply to the farmers. <coughs> so that has been the transition in the, in the power sector. Now another very important philosophy that our Honorable Chief Minister espouses. It's not always about the capital, it's not always about how much money you invest in the project. Especially when you're soliciting private sector's participation. It's also good policies that bring about effective changes to our state and to our economy. One of the policies that we're extremely proud of and now Government of India is also looking to emulate is called as the TSI Pass, our industrial policy. TSI Pass stands for Telangana State's Industrial Project Approval Self Certification System. I'll just give you three salient features of this policy and you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. This policy was unveiled exactly five years ago. November 29th, 2014 was when we unveiled TSI Pass. The three salient features, the three important features of TSI Pass are, one, if you would like to start a factory or an enterprise in the state of Telangana, you do not need to seek a clearance from the government at all. When I say government, I mean state government, I mean local government, municipality or village panchayat. If you have a piece of land, you can start construction on day one, you can hit the ground running. Now, for those of you who are wondering how this works, let me go into a bit of detail and explain it to you. That's the first thing, self-certification. Anybody who believes that they are in compliance with the law of the land can actually self-certify and start construction on day one of their enterprise. The second thing that we promise through statute, through this legislation, we promise all clearances through TSI pass in 15 days. If we do not deliver on the 15-day promise, a lot of you might be wondering, we've heard this before. We've heard states come in and make a pitch and say, you know, we have a single window system. But the joke is there are always multiple one windows behind that one single window. But in Telangana, where we've made it truly remarkable for industry is if we do not deliver on the 15-day promise. On the 16th day, it's a deemed approval. It's an automatic approval. And on the 16th day, another thing also kicks in. I have my principal secretary of municipal administration right here in front of me, Mr. Arvind Kumar is a senior bureaucrat of the 91 batch, but even he will not be spared. In fact, if we do not deliver on the 15-day window, from the 16th day, even the senior most bureaucrats would be levied, who are held responsible, of course, for the delay, will be levied a fine of rupees 1,000 per day till such time as the approval is given. So this sort of initiatives, and last, lastly but not the least, if you have a mega investor, if you are a mega investor, 
you're investing more than 30 million dollars US, or your project will create more than 1,000 jobs in the state, or it could be a project of strategic importance to the state or the nation. We tailor make a policy. So if you tell me, if you share with me, which other state in India is going to give you a better deal to that particular project, our policy, industrial policy gives me the flexibility to either meet or beat the best offer you have in India. That's the sort of policy that we've come out with five years ago. And for those of you who are wondering and smirking, you know, with a bit of cynicism, this is all sounding too good to be true. Does it work? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in the last five years, we've given out more than 11,800 clearances through TSI Pass, out of which 82% have already started operations and the remaining are also in various stages of construction, various stages of progress. We've been able to create more than 1.2 million jobs directly and indirectly at least twofold that. So that has been, and we've been able to attract 1,70,000 crores of investment into the state of Telangana in the last five years through this one single policy called the TSI Pass. And that's why our Honorable Chief Minister says it's not always about capital. It's about good policy making. It's about efficient, robust policies that will enable the private sector to operate in an environment which is conducive for them to thrive. The other thing I also wanted to touch upon, when I said we do not have a poverty of ideas in our country, but there is a luxury of capital, what did I mean? I meant there are a lot of inherent challenges inherent to our structure, our federal structure. There is the center, there is the state, and then even the financial institutions, especially the foreign institutions have to wade through a lot of challenges, you know, if you have to fund a project, etc. One of the things I thought I'll bring to your notice, you know, there are some vertical imbalances in, within, within the revenue sharing between the center and the states as well. What do I mean? Just to illustrate for you, the share of the center in the combined revenue receipts is well over 60% when it comes to pre-transfers. But in contrast, center share in the combined revenue expenditure of both center and states put together will is only 40%. So there is that 20% lacuna of receipts versus expenditure when it comes to center spending money on state-sponsored projects. In addition, as you all know, in fact, I was just talking to a couple of gentlemen, they also pointed out the same thing to me. As you all know and as you're all fully aware, Union government has been running huge revenue and fiscal deficits. We all are cognizant of it. Out of the center's fiscal deficit, that is for net borrowings, nearly 70% is being used for meeting the deficit on the revenue account. That is the current story. This is against, let me repeat, this is against the golden principle of public finance. The revenue receipts should at least meet revenue expenditure and that borrowings should be used for asset creation, capital expenditure. But unfortunately, that's not being followed. But while the center does not follow it, let me tell you, Telangana as a state has been doing exemplary well, exemplarily well when it comes to capital expenditure. What do I mean? We are a state, in fact, that's revenue surplus. We are a state that has, in fact, consistently been revenue surplus for the last five years. In 2014-15, our revenue surplus was 369 crores, and today in 1819, pre-actuals, it is about 4,337 crores. And let me also tell you one thing that may, may be, uh, 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 you know, another statistic which may be a bit hard to believe for some of you. Before the formation of the state of Telangana, in the United Andhra Pradesh, between the years 2004 to 14, 10 years, the total amount of money spent on capital expenditure in Telangana region was 54,052 crores in over 10 years, from 2004 to 14. But in the last five years, the statistic that I am going to tell you may be a bit of a surprise. In the last five years, the state of Telangana has spent on capital expenditure 1,64,519 crores. In fact, according to a study of the PRS, we are the leading state, in fact, uh, when it comes to spending money on economic development and infrastructure. At 63% of the budget allocation, we are the leading state in the country, according to PRS, when it comes to spending on capital creation. You know, I'm also proud to share with you. In fact, it gives me a great deal of pleasure in saying this. We are the number one state in the country if one considers percentage of capital expenditure versus the total state expenditure. Our first year average was 18.26, but now we are, in, we are among the top states in the country. 
Let me also tell you a couple of other interesting things we've done in terms of capital expenditure and asset creation. We are the first state in the country that conceptualized giving a portable drinking water connection to each and every home. We have nearly one crore households in Telangana and today I'm happy to share with you with more than 40,000 crores being spent, we've been able to cover each and every house and we've been able to deliver on the UN sustainable development goals. As part of this project, we've laid nearly 1,5,000 kilometers of water pipelines. We've created more than 19,000 new OHSRs, which is overhead service reservoirs, and I can go on and on. This is more than four times the money that has been spent. The project is called Mission Bhagirath. This is more than four times of what has been spent on drinking water in our state since the time of independence. Four times of what has been spent over a period of 65 to 70 years has been spent in the last five years by the state of Telangana. And the most important thing and most attractive thing about this project, when I said Jugad, what did I mean? The Jugad I'm referring to is while we were laying the one lakh plus kilometers of water pipelines, which is almost three times the circumference of Earth, we also have decided to lay fiber optic cable alongside the water pipeline so we can also give not just portable drinking water connection but also a fiber optic connection to each and every home in Telangana. You know how things change after you are able to give proper information. Now another very very important project that our Honorable Chief Minister has launched is irrigation with, with you know regard to put, uh, you know leveraging our irrigation potential. As I have mentioned Telangana in fact has completed the world's largest lift irrigation project called Kaleshwar. Now we also, I also have to mention, there are still 26 more ongoing irrigation schemes that is aimed at creating nearly 70 lakh acres of newly irrigated area with an outlay of nearly 2,25,000 crores. And we are of course going to spend more and more till 2025 to complete this ambitious agenda. Now let me also go on a bit more when I talk about strengthening our road networks and let me also talk about road networks. We've spent a few, you know, we've, we've, we've nearly spent 10,769 crores in the last five years and we've double laid most of our roads. We've also four laid most of our roads, a lot of bridges, etc. There have been a lot of capital, capital expenditure again. But what I'm really proud of as a Minister of Urban Development is a unique program called Dignity Housing, which we've launched in the state of Telangana with an outlay of nearly 18,000 crores of rupees. Almost 2,70,000 plus houses are being built. These are two BHK houses, 560 square foot, two bedrooms, one hall, one kitchen, and two toilets. And these are all given as part of the state's dignity housing program, gratis to the poor and homeless in the state of Telangana. And we've again collaborated with financial institutions. We've collaborated with a number of infrastructure players to make sure that this actually uh, has this dream has been realized. Now let me just play a quick video. I don't know who's playing it where, but let me just play a quick uh, video, a two-minute video on the Dignity Housing Program. Under the visionary leadership of Honorable Chief Minister Shruti Chandrasekhar Rao, Telangana State Government is on the threshold of realizing another dream: double bedroom housing scheme. An innovative initiative to redefine welfare in the country in order to provide dignity housing for the poor. For the first time in the country, this flagship program is creating a paradigm shift from credit and subsidy-based scheme to a 100% subsidized housing scheme, where double bedroom houses are allotted to the beneficiaries at free of cost.
scheme for poor, which is creating a sound economic asset with a hygienic living environment for the beneficiary. Let me just quickly wrap up, but uh, before I do that, since Vivek talked about municipal uh, local bodies raising bonds, etc. Hyderabad is a municipal corporation, the Greater Hyderabad Municipal Corporation, in fact has raised more than 1,000 crores through these uh, municipal bonds and Crystal was instrumental also in rating our uh, urban local bodies. Let me also share with you, Telangana's urban population is quite high. We are more than 40, we are nearly 43% urban and I believe in the next 5 to 7 years, Telangana will be one of those rare states in India where the urban population will outnumber the rural population. So therefore, a lot of urban infrastructure that needs to be created. So therefore, a lot of innovative models have been, uh, are being worked out by our urban development department. GHMC, as I pointed out, has raised Masala bonds and, bonds and then we also have in fact uh, created corporation on road for road development in the city called as the Hyderabad Road Development Corporation, which again, uh, through another program called CRMP, the Comprehensive Road Maintenance, has in fact uh, raised uh, 1,500 crores of rupees. And the other thing I wanted to point out in public transport sector, uh, Hyderabad Metro Rail is a shining example of what can be done. The world's largest public-private partnership has been completed and um, in fact uh, more than 3 lakh people, 3 lakh commuters are plying in the Hyderabad Metro today. Land pooling has been a very effective source of uh, you know, uh, money uh, making, uh, creating, raising finances for Hyderabad Metro Development Authority, the HMDA, which has been using this method and uh, which has raised uh, significant amounts. And uh, we continue to do that as well. Let me also quickly point out to the fact that we continue to leverage our economy very, very strongly and with the help of private sector, we continue to in fact, uh, you know, dream big, think big. We may be limited in terms of resources, but our imagination is limitless and we've continued to you know, we continue to grow. In fact, year on year, our growth rate in the last five years has been about 17%, which is higher than, uh, which is at least twice that of the national average. And as I've pointed out, our Chief Minister is a man who comes from the grassroots with a clear blueprint in hand. We have set out on this ambitious journey five years back. Our leadership has the audacity to think big. And this new kid in the block, I don't know if you're still new anymore after five years, but this new kid in the block as a young state in India has successfully built, like I've pointed out, the world's largest lift irrigation project, the world's largest public-private partnership metro rail, and we are also, we've also completed several other ambitious initiatives. Apart from mopping up our own resources, our state government has also used several innovative financing mechanisms and models, but with a little more support from union government, with a little more support from financial institutions and infrastructure players, and of course, credit rating agencies. I think uh, we can do a lot more, and uh, we can certainly work towards being one of the leaders. You've mentioned, Vivek, that uh, we are part of that middle group which has, you called us climbers, didn't you? The middle pack. Uh, I, can, I can assure you in, in a few years from now, Telangana will be leading from the front and with all of your support and guidance and blessing. Thank you very much for this opportunity.